What's that? No. Nope. Okay, can I have control back here, Joel? Okay, why don't you leave me with control unless until, until further notice, okay? Okay, hey, so everyone out there in TV land, we're gonna get started in about a minute here. Hopefully you can see the PowerPoint uh, as your main event. Uh, but uh, do us a favor, please uh, keep your line muted unless you're actually talking. Otherwise, uh, someone's gonna have something going on in the background doing your laundry, doing your dishes, and we will have to mute you then. And then, then we've kind of lost you. Then it's a one-way thing uh, from that point forward. And uh, when we get to that point at the Q&A section and roughly 35 minutes into this, uh, you need to use the raise hand feature uh, in order to raise your hand. And then Jewel will see that you'll pop to the top. Jewel will see that and then, uh, and then we'll call on you after that. Okay, so stay, keep yourself muted. Use the raise hand feature and then Jewel will call on you and you will unmute to speak or ask a question at that time. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do that. Any questions along those lines? Raising hand feature here. How do you use raising hand feature <laughs> for those of us sitting here in Warren right here? Okay, yeah. Um, you actually raise your literal hand, Matt. Got that? Yeah, there you go. Well, well done. Well done. Here, show this. I don't want to confuse those of you in TV land, but show everyone how you raise your hand. Okay. Uh, this is amazing, by the way. Uh, we have uh, here in Warren, I realize we're, we're pretending this COVID thing never happened and isn't happening at all right now we're in denial of it all right now um but we've got about 50 people here somewhat socially distanced outside in warren uh and for every one of us here in warren i think we have three people on zoom who are joining so uh this is awesome this is completely flattering uh that it's so easy to uh, or it's been a really boring six months for all of us right <laughs> what else are we going to do right uh let's see what time do we have 601 oh my gosh we're an hour late starting all right Cool, I think I'll get started here. Let's see, where to begin? Um, so uh, I uh, had a, a cool trip with a few friends back about a dozen years ago. Went up to Churchill, Manitoba to get really up, up close and personal with a bunch of polar bears in the wild. I thought that was awesome. I gotta, gotta take my kids to do that when they get old enough to appreciate it before they get out of school. Gotta do that. And there's a firm in Winnipeg, a little local travel firm that once a year, they will charter a plane with about 30 people and get a bunch of local Winnipeggers or Winnipegians or whatever you call them. And uh, they get up at four in the morning and they fly to Churchill, Manitoba, two, from Winnipeg, two and a half hours straight north in November. Uh, if you've seen any documentaries about polar bears pretty much ever, they kind of happen in Churchill. It's this little town that you cannot reach by road uh, on the shores of the Hudson Bay where all the polar bears congregate for about three weeks right before the ice forms on Hudson Bay. And they disappear, okay? So this, this, this firm charters a plane, fills it with about 30 people. They get up early in the morning. They arrive in Churchill at the crack of dawn. They spend a whole bunch of uh, like, like eight hours in a giant box together on wheels that trundles out onto the tundra. And they get up close and personal with polar bears in the wild. Then they trundle back and they have dinner uh, at some restaurant in the little town of Churchill in the middle of nowhere. And then at 10 o'clock, they hop on the plane again, and it heads south for two and a half hours, and by midnight, uh, they land, and they're sort of back home in Winnipeg, okay? So uh, uh, I got on the mailing list for this several years ago, and they said, but just know we do one of these a year, and when it happens, uh, it happens, and it sells out pretty quickly. So uh, anyway, so I'm on the mailing list, and I got an email on uh, February 11th, 2016, and I sprung into action and called them, gave them my credit card, signed up for me and my kids, okay? And then like something about fortune f favoring a prepared mind, I thought, you know, what could be more awesome than getting up close and personal with a bunch of polar bears in the wild with your two kids? Doing it with a couple dozen of your favorite people in life, right? So I slammed this email together and sent it out to about 40 or 50 people in my world and said, hey, wanna go look at polar bears with me? And uh, sent it out and I said, but, but it's kind of urgent. Like, I don't know how long this is gonna be available. There's only 30 seats, and according to the person I talked to in Winnipeg, when I had signed up with my three, there were four others who kind of jumped on it right there and then also, okay? And uh, so, anyway, uh, uh, you know, what's kind of cool about this, we, so we did it, by the way. Um, let's see, it was 22 hours after I sent the email that our little quasi-private group had sold out the plane, okay? 
That's just a thing I just did because it seemed really cool and fun and why the heck not? And why be any less than awesome when you can be completely awesome, right? So we sold the whole thing out. So there were about 25 of us and four unfortunate Canadians uh, <laughs> on the plane with us, but they were awesome too. Um, and uh, we all met in Winnipeg the night before, had an awesome restaurant in a private dining room in the best, uh, best restaurant in Winnipeg. And then we did all the stuff. We got up uh, early in the morning at 4 a.m. in the, uh, uh, the uh, charter terminal of Winnipeg Airport. We caught our flight two and a half hours north, did all that stuff, spent the full day, came back by 12.30 or one. We were back in our hotel room uh, by the airport in Winnipeg. And it was absolutely every bit as awesome as it, as it should be. And by the way, we did uh, also get up close and personal with a bunch of polar bears. Okay. Uh, awesome, awesome trip. Okay. Uh, so um, it just kind of makes me think there's, there's, there's sort of two kinds of people in the world. I love this photo. I got this photo in, uh, uh, where were we in? Stockholm. I just saw it there. Fun people and boring people, you know? So, you know, sort yourselves out. Okay. No judgment, you know? <laughs> um, but, um, uh, the, the kind of, so when you say, hey, you want to go look at polar bears up close and personal with me in the wild? One sort of person has a whole lot of clarifying questions. Well, how far is in November? How cold is it? You know, do polar bears have a taste for humans? You know, several other clarifying questions before they really know whether they want to do that or not. And some people know immediately that you don't want to do that. That's the first type of person. The second type of person says, yeah, I want to go see polar bears. Okay. So if you have a couple dozen really amazing, cool, fun people in your life who are of the latter variety, you tend to fill planes of people wanting to go see polar bears in a hurry when presented with that unique option. And it's just a blast. It's like the most deeply satisfying, fun thing I can think to do, okay? So this is kind of the start of me falling into what we're talking about here right now. And it's kind of what motivates me and gets me jazzed, okay? Um, so let's talk about Egypt. We, we did say in the, the email, this is about a particular trip in Egypt and a particular trip in Istanbul, okay? So my experience with, with uh, Egypt. So uh, we took a, uh, a Nile River cruise with Uniworld, which is a sort of high-end, five-star luxury international uh, river cruise line. Okay, we did this in Egypt in 2017 with some of the usual gang here, most of whom you can see out here in the audience right now. And uh, so it was every bit as amazing as it should have been. But there was this cool thing we noticed while doing this. Um, so uh, Uniworld is this big national firm that offers, uh, uh, offers cruises all around the world. But we noticed, so we've got to peek at the man behind the curtain, and Uniworld doesn't really operate any cruises. They license to a local operator, okay? And Uniworld charges the retail price, but they pay the actual hotel, uh, the, the, uh, the local uh, wholesale service costs to a local provider. And I got to peek at the man behind the curtain, which is this group called Spring Tours and learned about what was going on with that. I'm a little bit curious as a sort of a business nerd. And, uh, but in addition to that, uh, while getting on and off the boat every day for the few days in Luxor, we saw this thing parked right at the edge of the river. And I asked, I said, what's that? SS Kareem. And he said, oh, that's, the, uh, that's uh, King Fuad's uh, original Nile steamer, his private Nile steamer. And it's, uh, it's uh, celebrating its 100th birthday this month. 1917 it was launched, the king's private steamer. And then his son had it, King Farouk. And basically every Egyptian head of state, except for the last two, I think, have, uh, have, have used this at some point. The last two have been you know, busy imprisoning each other and beating down the masses and other stuff like that. Um, but um, I said, wow, that's, that's amazing. Can I, like, what's the deal? Can I get a tour of that? And I said, sure. So, they, so our, our guy, Same, said, sure. They talked to the manager of the boat, got on, got a full tour of it. I mean, it's tiny. We were on one of these big, like they call them the, the car battery boats that holds like 200 people and they go up to 200 people in some cases. Got a full tour of it and it's just, it's just amazing. It's got 15 guest rooms, half the size. It's built as like the, as the slowest ship on the Nile. And, and after the tour, I'm like, I, I, I want to do that. He said, no, you can't. It's, it's not available for, for, for retail sales. You've got a charter the whole damn thing. I'm like, I, I got a couple dozen friends. <laughs> I, I, I want to do that. <laughs> He's like, well, sure, I'll put you in touch with our sales guy in, uh, in Cairo. So he put me in touch with the sales guy in Cairo. I came home, I did my research. And it turns out, like, once you, you know, peek behind the curtain and see how this business operates with the strength of the U.S. dollar and tourism was way down in Egypt at the time and they have very high fixed operating costs but very low marginal costs 
and half their fleet was just sitting there because no one was going to Egypt at the time. And, uh, and by not charging any markup and by not having any advertising, but an email to a bunch of people in my world, we were able to put something really cool and amazing together, okay? My first trip in Egypt was the one on Uniworld with my family in 2017. I have since repeated that exact same itinerary with Spring Tours, who's the real operator. I've repeated it three times since then on the Kareem. So in four years, I've done this, I've done a tour, this tour or one like it four times. And something like a third of the people here in front of me today and Warren have been on this trip with me, okay? And you're back, I don't know, at least for the free beer because you're interested in what, I, I don't know, but I appreciate you coming. So it's a good sign. Istanbul, all right, Istanbul, there you go, okay. So uh, we've done that four times. So the SS Kareem is something really, really unique and special in this, okay? Uh, it is the only original Nile riverboat still operating under steam power. There's one other that sort of is compared to the Sudan, okay, which, is all, which would also be really cool, by the way, but a little bit different. Um, 14 guest cabins, including three balcony suites. That's it, okay? Um, approximately 44 staff and crew. It's outrageous. It's embarrassing. How these amazing people knocking themselves out to make sure we're having a splendid time every second of the day. It's like, it's embarrassing they're so awesome. And those of you in the audience, you're looking, you're seeing a few people here who are like, yeah, like that. Yeah, I paid these guys to come and, and nod appreciatively in, in agreement right up front. To, uh, so uh, it's built as the slowest boat on the Nile and it is our private floating five-star antique hotel for a full week on the Nile for the trip that we're talking about here, okay? The trip that we're talking about and offering here today is the exact same one that we've done in two of our three Nile cruises on the Kareem. And it's just one of these things, you only, it only fits so many people, and when you do it, the amount of enthusiasm that comes out of that is so much greater than the number of people taking it that it's, there's no effort to fill these as long as you plan more than a year in advance, okay? Uh, and this is the first effort and probably the last that we're gonna to make to fill another one of these. And we'll talk about some of the other details behind that here real soon, okay? But so here's a few shots in the SS Kareem. Almost all the shots you see here today, 80% I took on my iPhone on one of these trips. Uh, the vast majority were taken by either me or probably John Bennett, who's probably out there in TV land or Ian Ashbaugh. And in a few cases, I downloaded a stock photo when I couldn't, uh, couldn't find what I needed. Um, but uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, ever since our first Nile trip, I gotta move faster. We're not gonna get done here uh, in time. Uh, so even before our very first trip that we ever did to Egypt, um, wanting to educate ourselves, I've studied a lot of ancient, ancient history, but I'd never studied Egyptology at all. Uh, so, uh, so our entire family took the entire, we did our research, found what we thought was the best sort of introductory course that we could find. And together, we all watched the, uh, the 48 hour, or 48 30 minute lecture series offered by the Great Courses put on by none other than uh, uh, Dr. Bob Breyer, okay? So we watched all of this beforehand and it was amazing, it was awesome. Kai, how was it? Was it good? Yeah. Come on, you gotta be a little more expressive with me, Kai. <laughs> Dude, you gotta back me up. I got Brewsters up here enthusiastically agreeing with everything I say here, uh, but it was awesome. So, so, I mean, whether you go to Egypt or not, just, I mean, this, this is what COVID is for. It's actually useful. Go watch this, you know, go on, log on to the great courses and, uh, and download it and watch it and you'll know a whole bunch of really cool stuff you didn't know before. Uh, but uh, we did this to educate ourselves. And then for every trip I ever organized after that, I told people, this is required pre-trip homework. Don't travel with me unless you are not only willing to go through these 48 hour lectures, but you view that as a positive, as a benefit that it's a requirement to do so, to travel with a bunch of other people who view it the same way. So this, this has been the case for four out of the four annual trips we've done thus far, okay? So I had a moment about a year and a half ago where I was planning the next round of the Egypt trip and the next round of an, and planning the first of our organized Istanbul trips. And, uh, and I announced to uh, over dinner, I said, you know what? I'm trying to put together the best trip that can be had. And I'm gonna reach out to, to Tom Madden and Bob Breyer and see if they maybe we can pull them into our orbit with this stuff. You know, maybe get them to be our guides on this stuff. And uh, it, was, it was beautiful. So uh, someone in my family at, at this moment, I had my daughter, my son, my wife, and my mother at the dinner table. And I won't mention exactly who it was, but someone at, at the dinner table said, that's ridiculous. You're gonna be added to their block senders list so fast. They're not gonna respond to your inquiry. You know, uh, you're gonna get a restraining order if you push too hard and be the way you are about things. You know what we're talking about here. Uh, so, uh, 
And that's when I gave a very familiar sermon to people who know me. Like I got up in my soapbox. I'm like, no, like you just, you gotta, you gotta make awesomeness happen in life. You want something, you gotta go get it. You can't just sit around waiting for awesomeness to happen, right? And my, my then 18 year old daughter gave me the most profound compliment she's ever given me. And I said, you can't just sit around and wait for awesomeness to happen. She's sitting across the table looking at me. She looks to the left at her mother, looks to the right to her grandmother, and looks at me and says, well, honestly, dad, we can. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a, uh, it's, it's the best I've gotten from her in, in, in 18 years of this. So, uh, okay, so uh, Bob Breyer uh, did, did not have an email published anywhere. I, I looked at the university, university page, couldn't find it. I found a, a web browser where you could enter, like you got like 200 words to, to enter what you wanted to say and you type submit and so on. I'm like, okay, it's, go, it's, it's gone now. I'm like, how do I, how do I, you know, how do I follow up after this? But uh, Anyway, and he sent a very polite, like, copy and paste. I have the same copy and paste on my computer for when I get requests like, of the sort that I want to, you know, not be a jerk about, you know. But here's his response. Um, Dear Matt, glad to hear of your interest in Egypt. I returned from Egypt just now. Uh, I guide for Far Horizons, and I fear I'm booked for the next year, but thanks for thinking of me. All the best, Bob Breyer. Okay. So, uh, shot down, right, you know. But I got an email address. <laughs> uh, checkmate, Dr. Bob. <laughs> so I don't know why he didn't add me to his block senders list after that, but uh, somehow uh, I found myself invited to their home in New York City a few months later uh, uh, for, for a, what I thought was going to be a two-hour lunch. I lost sense of the time. Six hours later, my wife calls me. Where are you? We've got show tickets tonight. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to get out. You know? and, uh, it was amazing. I, I, I feel like I made a couple of friends. I hope they feel the same way in this, but it was like, it was a cross. The best way I can describe it, it's, it's a really nice, it's like a three-way collision between a really nice New York City home and, and his own private Grand Egyptian Museum and an episode of Hoarders. Okay, but it's amazing. And here's what I want you to understand. And I, and, and I gotta keep moving on this. Aside from the sort of celebrity star power of finding the best guy you know. I mean, you've seen Bob before if you've seen any documentaries on Egyptology in the past two or three decades probably, okay? Go check him out, look back at what you've seen before. Um, and aside from all the stuff he's published, all the stuff he's done, here's what I wanna convey, okay? And this is embarrassing, Bob, because I know you're out there listening to me somewhere among the hundred people, but, but I mean it. Like, aside from all that, for someone in the time I spent with him, and you'll, you'll get a little bit of this when you watch the videos, the, 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 the course, okay, which is still a little bit more rote. The absolute passion, the childlike passion and enthusiasm that he projects right there in front of you for this subject matter that has been his job for, I think, over 50 years now. Uh, that's amazing. We should all be so lucky to do that. And uh, so somehow in all of this, uh, Bob and his wife, Pat, who is a, uh, an art historian, and they've been doing these cruises and doing these tours, leading them, uh, tag teaming the organization of it themselves. So they are coming along on this one and they're going to lead us. Okay. So that's the, the, uh, uh, I've, I've done four tours in the last four years. The last three were on the Kareem, but that was using spring tours guides who are excellent. Okay. But they aren't the answer to the question that you ask when you ask yourself, what's the best we can do in the world? And then how do we put that together and make it happen? Okay, so I, I could not be more excited uh, than for the one that we're about to do. We were supposed to do that in February, already sold out with a waiting list of 10 people, and then COVID killed that. Okay, we just made the decision to kill that. That's being rescheduled. Uh, but um, let's see, I am way behind here. So I'm gonna step through irresponsibly fast on this because I talk too damn much. Um, but, uh, and so do you, so don't you start up. <laughs> hey, 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 that's enough, zip, zip it. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's, I don't even know where to begin with, with Egypt. It is beyond sublime. If you've been, I like to say, if you've been, if you've seen like, you know, the great antiquities of, of, ancient, uh, of ancient Greece, it's a bunch of ruins out in front of the lawn, okay? And the stuff that you see in Egypt is 1,500 years old, older, 2,000 years older, 2,500 years older, and it's fully intact, okay? So this is the trip that we're doing. Uh, in February of 2022. This is the first moment when we're offering this to anyone tonight. I'll give you more details on it here real soon. Just on and on, I don't even know where to begin. I want to, I want to spend 10 minutes on every single slide I'm stepping through here for everyone, okay? Um, 
But I am beyond proud to be able to stand here and offer this to the great people in my world. It's a blast to do this. I'm also beyond proud to be able to do it for the price that we're able to do this at, even though it is an expensive trip, okay? It is an expensive trip, but we'll talk about that also as we get ahead here. Um, so stepping through here. So I will share this, just a couple of hours. I'm, I'm behind schedule, but uh, uh, Deb Brewster emailed this to me just a few hours ago and I ran upstairs and stuck it in there. And I love this. Uh, she said, uh, we're looking forward to tonight's travel info session. I had to share my favorite pic from Egypt that shows the enormity of one of the temples. That small turquoise person is Matthew. Right there, there's a small turquoise. He's, not, he's less turquoise today, but, but still equally Matthew. Now in fairness, he's not a large man. So it does make the, you know, if you wanna make your temple look large, it's a photography trick everyone knows. Use a, use a small human for scale. Um, see you tonight, Deb and Rick. I had to like run upstairs and, and insert that one in there. Uh, but it's amazing. This stuff's, you know, 3,500 year old temples that are fully, fully preserved because they, they got buried in sand and forgotten some 2,000 years ago. I mean, that, that doesn't even... Go ahead. The colors on the... Hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. The, the colors on the ceiling in that temple are as vivid as what they are in the picture on the right-hand side there. I mean, it's... You, you can see every color. It's, yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, let, let, let's move on. Thank you, though. This is great. Uh, okay, so, more cowbell. I'm not summarizing what's awesome about this Egypt tour. You can do your own awesome Egypt tour. And if you're looking at this saying, hey, it's already sold out and the waiting list is 10 people long, or it's outside of my budget, I will sit down with you and, and help you to understand how to do an awesome Egypt trip for real that will fit with your budget, okay? I'm trying to explain what is uniquely awesome about this one that you can't get any other way, okay? In addition to all the awesomeness you would hope for from your once in a lifetime trip to Egypt, okay? Um, again, celebrity expert guides Bob Breyer and Pat Remler are on this trip for the first time, and I could not be more excited about that. Uh, and Becky is in the back doing a happy dance right now, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, we're on the SS Kareem. The SS Kareem is our own private floating five-star hotel, antique five-star hotel for the seven nights that we spent on the Nile. And because of our approach that Jewel and I are using of going direct to the local provider and having a zero advertising budget, and charging, I don't wanna say no markup, but absolutely the minimum necessary to cover our very thin overheads, okay? You just will not find this anywhere, period, okay? Uh, moving on. Uh, the price for this one is $5,880. That's the starting price, okay? Uh, it is not a cheap trip, okay? Uh, we'll talk later though about, uh, compared to the retail you should expect to pay for a trip like that, it's at least a 40% discount to what it would cost for this same trip, if you could find it, which you can't, okay? With all the extra cowbell that we're adding here. Uh, maximum 24 guests. I will tell you, I'm not BSing you here. My mom, who's in Michigan right now, just texted me a couple of hours ago saying, uh, I'm not gonna be able to make the Zoom tonight. Sorry, uh, I want one of those cabins. Don't sell it out. <laughs> that, not, that's, so, uh, Maximum uh, 22 guests that, are, that it's uh, open for right now. Uh, and uh, details that we'll cover uh, when you're, if you're ready to sign up, you're interested, we'll make sure you understand the, uh, the details there. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, Istanbul. Let me talk a little bit faster here. Uh, start with my favorite hotel in the world, the Magnora Palace Hotel, okay? Um, which is also, by the way, in my favorite city in the world. Um, small private boutique hotel with a six star service attitude at a two star price. Uh, it's right in the middle of the ancient old city. Okay, like the, the booking.com location rating from hundreds of guests is a 9.9 .9 out of 10. If you don't know, if you know Istanbul, you know exactly where I'm talking about. It's exactly right there, but just two blocks off to the side, so it's a little bit quiet and out of the way. Uh, 18 guest rooms, that's it. Um, built, launched, owned, operated, and continuously awesomeified by my dear friend and brother from another mother, Mehmet Atash. Some pictures of Mehmet right here. So Mehmet and I met through a, uh, an online dating service, actually. Um, <laughs> seven years ago in 2013, um, my, some friend, my wife and some friends and I were in Istanbul. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's an online dating service that connects uh, uh, international travelers with hotel owners. It's called uh, tripadvisor.com. Um, so his hotel came to the top with good reason. And so we rented it and we quickly became fast friends. We traveled the world together and, continue to, and, and, and intend to continue doing so. I love the picture at the bottom. 
So Mehmet's afraid of dogs. He doesn't quite admit that completely, but he's afraid of dogs. So he, was, he couldn't leave his hotel for three days when that, uh, <laughs> that dog settled down. So he, that's a lot of fun, because uh, there's a lot of dogs in Istanbul. Uh, so uh, uh, I've just booked the whole hotel for the week, okay? This is an encore trip. We did the first of these a year ago in September. We're supposed to be there now, today. That's canceled. That's pushed off till 2021. That's why we're talking about 2022 right now. I don't have the time to do two of these next year. Okay, September's the time to do it though. Okay, uh, much the same as Bob Breyer in the conversation with my wife and kids and my mom. I said, I wanna go out, reach out to, to, to Tom Madden and Bob Breyer and pull them into our circle and awesomeify everything and then see if they wanna be, uh, wanna be a part of this. And, uh, uh, and, and Tom and I became fast friends. He showed an immediate enthusiasm uh, for wanting to do this. But uh, it's the same deal. Um, this is Tom's history of Istanbul. Again, fully credentialed academic expert in medieval history. He's an absolute expert on the Crusades. He's an expert on Istanbul. This is the publicly accessible history on Istanbul. It covers 3,000 years of history from about 3,000 years ago up until about five years ago. And this became required reading. Whenever I brought someone to Istanbul, I'd say, hey, read this book. You know, what if I don't want to? Then Travel with someone else, you know, read, read the book before you go. You're, you're, you're cheating yourself to not do that. So we pulled, uh, we pulled Tom in. Um, I'm gonna skip over the credentials. I gotta, I gotta move faster in here. Uh, Tom's not a tour guide. He's a, he's a, a scholar. He said, I really want a tour guide. Uh, number one, I don't wanna get arrested by the tourism police. I tried to convince him that it'd be fun for us to bond uh, while spending a good day or two in a Turkish prison. Uh, and uh, he didn't think that was any good. So we, we asked the question as the way I approach it, like who's the best tour guide in the city? So I found the tour guide that, that all the celebrities use. And I love this. So Sharif Yenin is the man. We've got a bunch of his books and periodicals over here. Um, his, his two uh, most, most famous uh, celebrity uh, uh, clients he's had are, are Oprah and the Pope. I think it's interesting that he always shows Oprah on his website over the Pope. I don't know what that says about the world. But uh, anyway, so, so Sharif and Tom tag teamed this. So the approach, which I, this is, this is my approach. This is my vision. And I spent about six months building this tour. I committed to it a year in advance, then it forced me to get really, really good on Istanbul uh, over the next several months. So the day before on the rooftop, Tom gives a one hour to 90 minute lecture that is tied to one major historical theme on the history of Istanbul for a major era that's usually a biographical sketch of the main character. It could be Constantine, could be Justinian, could be Mehmet the Conqueror, could be Suleiman the Magnificent, and so on. So every night is a different biographical sketch that, 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 that typifies a major turning point or a major era in Istanbul's 2,000-year uh, uh, history. Uh, then the next morning, we do a two-hour walking tour where Sharif leads the tour, Tom pipes in on the margins, brief two-hour walking tour. The last thing I want to do is something where we're all following someone around with a sign, okay, like that. Two-hour walking tour on that theme, and then, we break. There's an optional tour that follows if you want to go with that, or you can go off on your own, or we put a whole bunch of really cool stuff in front of you, and you have to choose among these things, including doing nothing or going your own way, okay? Um, and uh, so I'll step through the, the major uh, historical themes. Day one, Constantine the Great, Justinian on day two, the blues and the greens, some of the politics of that era, uh, the Fourth Crusade, I love Tom on the night he did the, the, the Fourth Crusade on the top of Mehmet's rooftop for the lecture, which is exactly where the major events of the Fourth Crusade happened, like exactly. And I asked him the question, like, come on, Tom, like, like you're among how many people in the world who are, you know, who know as much about the Fourth Crusade as you do? He said, well, my original advisor died, so I know more than anyone alive on the Fourth Crusade. He, could, he couldn't have been more excited. Dad. He's like, come on, don't you guys have anything more you want to ask me about the Fourth Crusade? Like, you know? like, no, Tom. No, it's, I, it's, just, it's just amazing to be right there in that spot with the man who's, you know, I mean, over there is his book on the Fourth Crusade. I, think, I don't think anyone else actually wrote an entire book on just the Fourth Crusade, and then several other books on the Crusades while we're at it. Um, so uh, Conquest of 1453 and so on and so forth. A uh, whole bunch of organized optional activities every day. Some of them are included because they're free. They don't cost us anything extra and others have an ancillary fee att attached to them. I also developed a four page document, which is 29 ways to be awesome in Istanbul on your own. And for each day, we kind of say, it, based on where we left off late in the morning, you might want to do these ones from here, from where we are in the city or they might follow the theme. Um, and then we had a whole bunch of this sort of stuff. So I sent an email around couple days beforehand, and I said, uh, good morning, awesome people. 
I'm going to tentatively offer up an unofficial alternative option for Tuesday afternoon through early evening, immediately following our morning Hagia Sophia tour through a combination of public tram, subway, ferries, and at least four miles on foot. We will plan to make our way to Romelli Fortress on the European side of the Bosphorus, followed by dinner in Asia before returning home early evening. Something resembling lunch may or may not happen along the way. This will be the nominal plan at the start, but as for what actually happens, that's anybody's guess. At the outside, I disclaim any expertise or even competence with the Istanbul ferry or system, and I make no promise that we will board the correct line or choose the correct direction in the unlikely event that we get on the right one or that we learn anything useful from our mistakes as we go. If you are foolish enough to follow, I have the necessary surplus of reckless overconfidence to lead. My only promise is that if we will not be home in time for Tom's 8 p.m. lecture, we will have perished valiantly in the attempt. And if at any point along the way you are putting that goal at undue risk for the rest of us, we will leave you behind and write off your demise as an acceptable casualty. <laughs> if on balance you view all of the uncertainty of this loose agenda as an exciting bonus rather than the liability that it manifestly is, and if you're eager to put your walking shoes on and log the miles without fatigue or complaint, you might want to opt out of the other stuff on the afternoon's agenda and join me. Uh, and uh, so uh, we had about uh, a dozen people who did that. We, uh, we didn't lose anyone along the way. We made it back just in time. And it was like, it's one of the best days I had in 2019. Uh, I did five of these walking tours where I just spontaneously went on walkabout with a group, anywhere from one person to a dozen people in this case, okay? And like, you know, I sure as hell haven't had a day that good in, 20, in 2020, right? <laughs> well, not in the last six months of it anyways. Uh, okay, um, other stuff. Uh, we got a cool story here. It's, it's delightful when you have a guy like Tom Madden who discovers something new. That he hadn't didn't know knew, that he didn't know existed before that was right in his area of study, uh, but no time for that. We got to move on. Uh, another cool thing about Istanbul: filled with dogs and cats. They're strays, but they're taken care of by public vets. They have their shots. They're spayed. They're neutered, and locals take care of them, so they're friendly. These are, it was a bazillion shots we've taken over the years on my many trips to Istanbul. We do a full day private luxury yacht cruise on the Bosphorus. The standard Istanbul tour is you pay $50 to get uh, loaded on, a, on a, a public ferry with 300 other people, and they ship you up and down the Bosphorus while, uh, while, little, while little, yes, yeah, Ian, thank you, Ian. Yes, while, while little flunky thugs uh, try to get you to buy overpriced uh, bad sandwiches and orange juice and then threaten to send you to jail when you don't pay the prices. That's a true story, actually. Thank you for reminding me, Ian. Uh, another of the best days I've had in travel, <laughs> not quite going to jail in Turkey. Uh, so, I mean, I, I try to do one slide of, of three or four photos for everything we do, but for the, for the yacht cruise, I'm just going to, you know, I put a bunch of them in here. I mean, we had our own private yacht for the day. We cruised all the way to the Black Sea, climbed to the top of the mountain to see the ruins of the Genoese castle. Um, here's a great shot that, uh, that, this is John Bennett right here. Uh, John got a cool series of shots of the Tenaccio kids jumping into the Bosphorus. Three of the four of them. <laughs> uh, just, just beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Not a video, just a series of shots. Uh, that's cool. Uh, so there's that. And then we all got together for a cool farewell dinner. All right, more cowboy. What's uniquely awesome about this trip? The hotel is our own private hotel. You're going to leave this trip at the end having made a friend. You're going to fall in. If you don't fall in love with Istanbul, if you're thinking right now, Istanbul, what's that all about? If you don't fall in love with it at the end of this week, and thinking, I got to get back there. And thinking, I've got a place now. I got a special place in Istanbul. And you're going to be sending your other friends and family there. Like, I have failed utterly if you don't fall in love. With it. You don't have to have any starting point. The only thing you have to do beforehand, buy your plane ticket, read the book. Okay? That's all you got to do. Um, so, uh, so there we go. Uh, this is also specifically a seven-night tour. And it's designed so that people with a limited vacation budget can take exactly five days of vacation a Monday through Friday in this and still leave from home and return from home. Leave uh, Friday night and get home by the end of the day Sunday. This starts at $1,994, okay? Uh, much less expensive than Egypt. Uh, lugging the Kareem up and down the Nile is just an expensive thing to do. There's no way around that. Um, so, uh, and there's some details for you. Um, for those who are part of the canceled trips to Istanbul, uh, for this year and also for Egypt coming up in February. These are the rescheduled dates. This is the first moment where I've, re I've announced that. So I've heard it all the cats. I've scheduled it with everyone. Uh, but uh, 
Got to move on. Uh, I also show some comparison prices here for each of these trips to the closest comparable trips that are offered retail that I can find. Okay, these are relatively comparable trips, and I show with the uh, with the X's and the check marks whether they include the same level of uh, of accommodation or uh, scholarly experts traveling, and then the number of days and the prices for them. Okay, uh, but uh, want to move on. So, uh, so who should travel with us? Um, Really quickly here. Again, sort yourselves out here. Okay. Um, this is just taken out of the uh, frequently asked questions document uh, for, for our, our most recent Egypt trip. But uh, are, are well behaved kids welcome? Absolutely. Think about yourself in this. Think about whether this argues for you coming or staying home. Okay. I'm not trying to talk you one way. I just want you to make the right choice for you and, and for me. Okay. Uh, what about ill behaved problem children and or their clueless problem parents? Okay, if there are any undue problems, we can always cite this uh, item as fair prior notice and throw the offending children and or their parents into the Nile. Okay, is there an age cutoff for kids? I say not really. For my kids, it was about 12 when I said they were ready to come travel the world with us. Kai went to Egypt at age nine. I had my doubts. He nailed it. Okay, that was his first trip to Egypt. First of many, right Kai? Uh, what if I'm a... Uh, what if I'm a whiny high maintenance person with a narrow comfort zone who doesn't travel well and can't gracefully roll with the punches? Notwithstanding that this is a pretty cushy trip and that you should keep, your, uh, that should keep you safely ensconced within your comfort zone, for the record, we hope you are a strong swimmer. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to hand over. I'm way behind. I apologize. I did say 35 was the max I would take, right? And I took 30, 38. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, I'm going to hand this over to, and introduce Jewel Rosansky. So of the roughly 150 people here, virtually and otherwise, I don't know what the final numbers are. Uh, about two thirds of you came on my invitation, about a third came on Jewel's invitation. Uh, Jewel and I are working together to help make this stuff happen and make it a little bit more frictionless, a little bit less work for me. Uh, and uh, Jewel's gonna talk about some of what we're doing with cultured travel. We finally put a business wrapper around this so we can get insurance and do all the stuff that we kind of just have to do to make this stuff work. So I'll hand it over to Jewel for a few minutes. Okay. And um, <coughs> I, need, I need to totally undress to give you the mic, don't I? Will it work? Can people, huh? Wave if you can hear me from, the, from home. Wait, okay. we can do this. Okay, I think you're fine. You start, and I'll get awkwardly close to you. Okay. I'll stay awkwardly close to you until, until I can hand this up. Go ahead. Right. Okay, I think we're okay anyways. Um, so as this says, this is definitely my dream job, and it, it's kind of an interesting story that we can share with you later how this all came together with Matt and I working on this. And um, I've done a lot of, shall we say, the kind of boring grunt work behind it. And like he said, the insurance and putting the, the wrapper and the label on things. But I love it. And it's, it's definitely something that I'm super passionate about. And the mission behind it is what I'm really passionate about. So I have always loved educational travel. And um, I attribute that to my favorite teacher and probably one of the most influential people in my life, Mrs. Martin, who is on the call today. And um, she took us essentially everywhere distance even if it was a super late night so we could learn something great and just get out there and do it and um then in 2008 when i got hired at eisenhower kelly martin not no relation but just two totally influential people in my life um took a chance on me and let me take 11 kids from eisenhower to mexico and i'm really fortunate to have one of my students who went here with us tonight and also one on the call too so um that really just kicked off for me the passion that i had in taking people out, getting them to experience the world and seeing the value of the enrichment that you get from traveling and just going out and learning in a way that you're gonna remember way more than you ever do in the classroom. So um, one of the things that we really want you to take note about is that our, our philosophy here is that this is not about making a profit. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, I would love to make this my full-time job. This would be like killer for me to make this my full-time job. But we want to just provide as many amazing experiences for people as we can, because we want people to see the world and be as passionate about traveling as we are, and then just let that ripple effect go out into the planet. So as you can see, um, we are working on a lot of different ways to keep costs low. I know that a lot of people don't travel because of cost. It's just, it is what it is. And so um, since COVID hit, I did get my travel agent's proficiency certificate, and I'm working on another um, certificate level for being a travel agent so that we can get um, more discounts and hopefully pass those along to people that travel with us as well. Like Matt said, we're going directly to local service providers, so we're cutting out all of that overhead that we have, you know, that with marketing and brochures and, and the different things like that. Um, we're just 
deciding that our marketing is pretty much the word of mouth that we've got and then the occasional and since school started I haven't even done that Facebook or Instagram posts that you might see me putting out there and that's basically you know basically it for marketing and Matt has been so awesome and generous and that all his time and everything he has been doing is completely and utterly free on his end he just wants to make these amazing experiences happen for people which is so cool this button yeah yeah okay so uh, I didn't know initially he was going to put this there, but after I found out that the two people I mentioned and then, of, of course, some other people that were coming, I was like, wow, if I could travel the world with some of the most awesome people I've ever met in my life and some of the most influential people, that would be super cool. So I was just really happy um, and really appreciative for those of you that have turned out tonight and, and came to find out what we're working on. So our pricing philosophy, we know we can't go in the hole. We can't just start something and, and go into debt over it. That's, you know, that's not possible. And we do know travel costs money. And like I said, I'd love to be able to make this a living someday and just pay the basic bills that I have right now. Perfectly comfortable in the lifestyle I'm living. Um, we want to let you know that we're, we're very happy to provide you with what it costs us, what our margins are, what our, our uptick on everything is. We want you to, to know what we're doing, and we really want you to see that we're being honest on everything that we're doing as well. So if you want to see anything that we're do, you know, what our pricing is, just let us know. And also, if you see one of our trips and you're like, that's the trip of a lifetime for me, I totally want to do it, but I can't, and I just can't do that much. We know we can't give every trip away. We can't do these things for free, but we, we truly and genuinely want you to have that conversation with one of us and we want to see what we can do. We want to make this happen for people. And um, one of our goals, although you know, we know it might not be super realistic right now, but it, it really is there, is that we don't want to ever turn anyone away due to financial limitations. And so my experience is traveling with kids. And I've taken kids to Mexico, like I said, Costa Rica, Peru, Spain, Italy, um, Chicago, New York City, Gettysburg, you know, pl plenty of places. And I hated knowing that I couldn't take kids who really wanted to go. So adults are the same way. We all work hard, but not everybody can necessarily afford it. So please talk to us. And we really feel that if we just believe and stay straight with our mission, that eventually the finances will work themselves out. So um, what's the catch in all this though? So we're not planning on developing a sales team. We're not planning on getting a big staff, having big marketing or anything. So if you do travel with us and it's as awesome as, as Matt's saying, and I know I went to Istanbul um, last two summers ago, 2019, it's, it, it is. Um, we definitely are telling you that this is your obligation to us then to just refer people. And they have to be awesome people. They have to be people we'd all wanna spend like seven to 11 days with, okay? So just refer people. Or you will get blackballed. <laughs> yeah. So just refer people to us. That's all we ask. That's all we ask. Okay. And like uh, this says to just anyone that went to Istanbul, you have to give Mehmet and the Magnara Palace a five star. And I'll tell you the value in just knowing Mehmet, like he's one of the coolest guys I've ever met in my life. So just knowing him and, and uh, meeting him was totally worth the trip. Um, Matt made a wager with me. He bet me one whole dollar that we would have these trips sold out by Halloween. So, we'll see if you're right. Yeah, we will, <laughs> all right. If you wanna hold your spot, so like I said, I'm the one kind of doing the grunt work on things and I know we went fast through the what's um, included and what's not. I have a really nice booking page, all that sort of stuff done, everything nice, neat packaged. I have a fully operational website, everything going that's been done with that. Um, you'll see that uh, we're asking for a deposit of $1,000 per person or 25%, whichever is less. And then we have a payment schedule um, that's on there as well. However, we're willing to be totally flexible with the payment schedules. So just let us know kind of what works with you. And um, as long as we have everything 90 days prior, which is when most suppliers and things are wanting all that cost kind of rolled into things. We want to work with you. We want to work with you and make it happen and just make amazing experiences happen. Also, the refund policy that we have come up with, honestly, like if you just go with a regular company and believe me, I know this, I know Nicole knows this because we just had to deal with canceling or postponing Spain last year. I was supposed to take about 30 people to Spain in June, not, then that didn't happen. So we really want to be, like we said, not about the profit in this. So we understand it's kind of a sketchy time right now in travel. So anything you pay now is fully refundable up to 12 months before the start of the trip. After 12 months, we'll still refund it as long as we can find. So if we have a waiting list and we already have people waiting, 
Um, if we can find someone to take your place, or if you know someone that will take your place and they're a paying traveler, then we'll refund your money. After that point though, there are costs that go into these things. So you have to pay non-refundable deposits for, for your suppliers. And so um, we would refund you whatever was left after we got those, you know, what cost we'd already paid out taken care of. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Joel. Okay. Uh, we're about 15 minutes behind where we'd hope to be at this point, but we're, we're almost wrapped up here. This is good. Uh, future adventures. I mean, look, there's a bunch of places that I've fallen in love with that I want to do a trip uh, until I can find a way to do it where the trip itself benefits from the approach of bringing a dozen or two dozen people along, I'm not going to do it. Like I want very much to do that for Greenland, but I don't know how to bring two dozen people along without diluting the experience. I haven't solved that yet. And I might never solve it. Okay. I will say that uh, 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 Churchill, Manitoba, and uh, hiking the, uh, the Alps, the Swiss Alps, are likely to come together in the next 90 days or so likely i think maybe they'll get shot down when we try to work through the details those are two that we're pretty close on that we already know the details on i'm doing the uh the swiss alps uh with a bunch of people uh next summer so it's highly likely that in 2022 we'll do it uh the, the, we'll repeat the same thing um but uh, we are accepting initial expressions of interest for anyone who, if you want to be like pre on the list beforehand for either of these speak up and uh uh and and that will also if enough people raise their hands say hey i want to you know i want to do that uh, that'll that'll spur us on to make it happen and solve the uh, the remaining outstanding issues. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm beyond flattered at the number of people who've taken the time out to check up to the top of our hill and you know, expose themselves to <laughs> to other people's exhalations uh, and everyone out there in TV land. Uh, if you did not RSVP individually, please follow up with me or Jewel uh, to make sure that we have you on our list. We're not going to spam your, your inbox with a bunch of crap. Uh, also, I have a gift for real, no strings attached. Uh, one of my favorite books. Uh, if, if we know that you attended on Zoom, one per family unit, uh, make sure we know and I will have the nice, uh, the nice folks at Amazon and UPS send you a copy of something. Uh, those of you who are here in person, you can grab a copy of the book right over there. Okay, on your way out. One per family unit. And if you've traveled with me before, you've already gotten one, so you don't have to take another one. Okay. Um, so the Angoves I've heard maybe need, maybe need two for the couple. There's something going on there from what I understand. Uh, so here's what we'll do. Um, just so y'all know, so all of you up here in Warren, uh, we want to do Q and A, any comments from people who have traveled before. Uh, I want to be respectful of the seven o'clock time on this, but I will stay live on zoom until all the people on zoom are satisfied and have asked their questions. So I will continue and stay live for, for that straight through. Uh, we will break in about 10 or 15 minutes uh, here in Warren for those who don't want to hear all of that. Okay, it's not rude to get up if we're still going. I don't know how much curiosity there's going to be out there. Okay, anyone who has traveled on one of these trips, or anyone who has anything to share that would be very welcome at this time. I do know that uh, Jill Tenaccio said she had to get off at seven o'clock. Uh, so we told her she could go first. She had something she wanted to share. So do we have our technology down to let, to, to let, uh, let Jill pipe in here? Is, is her hand raised? Jill, if you're out there and you're following this, raise your hand. And you want to stop sharing the screen, I think. So. Yep. Let's get our technology straight first so people can see them on the screen. Okay. So that's good, I think. All right. So, you got to unmute or. Okay, Jill, you can go ahead and speak. Can you hear me? All right, I'm here with Phil and Amanda, and and we just today. So Matt, I think today was one year ago when we traveled because all of our memories are popping up of Istanbul last year. So I had to admit when Matt sent it out, you know, I jumped on with his enthusiasm. And then our other friend, Chrissy, who I know she said she had to go to the Apple store, so she's on the phone. Um, but the adventure was so good for us because we didn't really know anything about Istanbul. We would have never had the in-depth experiences. We just jumped on any random adventure that Matt and Tom, anyone spontaneously wanted to do. And it, it's just a trip that would have never happened. We had been um, on another trip overseas a few months before coming and we thought oh we'll just figure it out we'll wander and we we struck out a lot on 
on our other trip, but because Matt had given us the playbook with everything that was vetted out, we, we ended up, every place we went was really just awesome. It was awesome is the word of every day of the trip. So thank you, Matt, and we can't wait to go on another trip. Awesome, thanks, Jill. And hi to Amanda in the background. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Sorry for the feedback. Uh, Rich, uh, Rich Wolchek. Hey, thanks, Matt. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit here. So, three points. One, the the sites, the historic sites, were just breathtaking, and what made them all. The, 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 that much better was having Sharif, uh, a great tour guide, and then telling us the uniqueness of the sites we were seeing. You can go to any city in the world traveling and see sites, but when you have someone telling you about the meaning of the sites and the history, and then what made it even more icing on the cake was Tom at night talking about the historic periods of those sites, and the, and the, the and Istanbul is incredible. Just each, each, one question came up, when, why don't they restore that site? And they said, to what? Byzantine, Christian, Muslim, what do we restore it to? It, that was just those little nuances of the trips and seeing the site was fabulous. The food, I'm a foodie. I like to, when I'm in a city, eat outside and get the experience of the city, the nightlife, and see what, what the culture is like. And it was fabulous every night. I love the food, love the meat. I ate more bread in one week than I eat in a year. It, it was unbelievable. And safety, uh, if any of you know the story, it took a straight jacket to get in there, but um, I, there was never a moment, and Matt even called her out one time at, at one of our dinner sessions or evening sessions, said, Ann, you're the, you're the canary in the cave. How did you feel? And she said, I feel as safe here as I did at home. Um, it, it was an experience. I also did Churchill and I got within two feet of a polar bear and thank God someone thicker and bigger was next to me. So they didn't go after me. But, was that Ian? Was that Ian who pulled him back from the... I'm not, I'm not naming names, Matt. I'm not naming names. It, it was fabulous. And I wanted to push. Uh, Ian, Ian... <laughs> so that, there's what I have to share. Istanbul was incredible. Incredible. Awesome, Rich. Love you, man. Thanks. Tonight, cheers, too. Love you guys too. Thanks. We have um, two other questions. So Chrissy asked if bringing kids on the Egypt trip, ages 12 and 14, would they have their own room or is there a room that would work for four? Uh, uh, you want to kill the, thank you. Uh, Egypt trip, there is no double occupant, or no uh, triple occupancy option. Doesn't exist on the Kareem. Uh, we can work something out in the hotels. If you've got, if you want to save some money on that, so when we're at the Winter Palace Hotel or the uh, uh, the Ritz Carlton, uh, you can economize on that and reduce the cost. But the Kareem is the Kareem; it's fixed, it's set, it's all the original everything. Ironically, even the bed in the King's Chamber is a queen size bed. So, there's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is what it is. Great and then question. An, another question we have is: Do you get off the riverboat each day for an excursion? Uh, every single day we get off the boat for at least one excursion. In one extreme case, uh, it, it all gets stage managed at the Temple of Kamumbo where we sneak in there right before it opens and we have our own private Ptolemaic temple uh, at sunrise for about two hours. And then I think we hop back on and pretty much are on the Nile the whole day after that. Uh, but otherwise we are always off, at, off somewhere at some point. Do we have any other questions? If there's anyone on Zoom that has any questions, um, feel free to raise your hand. Anyone, any question, anything you want to say, just use the, the raise hand feature or you can text it through. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Anything here? Any, yeah. Yeah. What's that? Travel cost is not included, yeah. If you look at, there are slides in there, and I, I'll be happy to send all the slides, and we think if the technology gods uh, cooperated today, we have a video of this also, if you want to see. We'll send all the materials, the fine print is all in there, but generally speaking, you get your, your airfare is not included. The trip, the tour starts when you arrive at the hotel, generally. In Egypt, it starts when you land at the airport. You are met at the airport, and you're in the bubble from that moment forward. Uh, Istanbul, the trip starts when you arrive at the hotel. 
Yes, Michelle. Hold, hold on. I, I should uh, go ahead. Sorry. Do you work to arrange the transportation or is that um, uh, the participants job? For, uh, oh, as far as uh, flights, you yes. mean, for example? So one of the things we're hoping to do, it, did you want to respond to that, Joel? Okay. Okay. And then I think we have some, um, some people who have been trying to possibly speak on there too. But um, I'm hoping that as soon as I get my certification through, and I'm, I'm going to say I'm about 10 days away from actually having credentials, like my number that I can use, um, that I can help people arrange flights. Um, and also maybe if they need a hotel the night before or something like that. And then also travel, supplemental travel insurance, if you want to have trip insurance, uh, cancellation insurance, stuff like that. So that's what I've been kind of educating myself on and preparing myself to be able to offer to people that go with us too. Yeah, we're, we're actually hopeful that once she's fully credentialed, that some of the stuff we're doing, we will be able to get for you at a lower cost. And then our prices will go down also. We had that conversation, like, can we really lower some of the, we, we're hopeful that some of these prices might go down from the numbers we gave you but not until we can prove out that the costing advantage is there because there's not much fat left in the in the costing at this point from what we've done so far yeah okay michelle betts did you want to say something because i saw your screen pop up really quick and the same thing with rich i just wanted to make sure if you guys wanted to say something you got a chance yeah i did want to say i went on the istanbul trip last fall, last fall. And, and um, uh, a couple, couple things I wanted to say is I strongly encourage everybody to follow Matt's uh, suggestion of reading the book. Um, I actually, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to absorb, but what I found is I actually tended to listen to it on Audible um, and found that it, it certainly enhanced the experience of the trip when you've already read about it and you understand the historical significance of what you're looking at and I, I just can't say no I mean it's it Istanbul calls you back I it's been calling me back ever since I went I mean it's the most amazing experience too, too. of my lifetime it's it's amazing I just can't I can't encourage I know the Angos are out there in the crowd and I I think they're 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 in um at least Kim is yeah. So, uh, I, I just anybody who's even on the fence, don't even worry. Just do it. It's the most amazing experience you will ever have. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, let, let me say that for Istanbul, I got, I got to say this. And again, it's my favorite city in the world. So Rome is also my favorite. Whichever one I last returned from is usually my favorite. It bounces around a little bit. The standard thing for Istanbul tourists from the West is you spend two or three days there before you hop on a cruise ship and do something. That's like the standard thing. And you leave thinking, ah, I've been to Istanbul, I've done it. Check the box, okay? I want you to spend a week there going a layer deeper, a deep week, and then leave after a week thinking, oh, I've got unfinished business here. This place is way more, and it's, it, it'd be an amazing 72 hours, but no, I want you to leave like, like with, a, with, with an additional thirst that's much greater than the one that you came in with. And that's, uh, that's doable. That's what I want to have. It's what happened to me. I've been there a dozen times since my first trip seven years ago. Yeah. Um, we do have a, another question that just says, um, what is the airfare cost for Egypt? Uh, Egypt? I know that'll vary, but generally what have you paid when you've... Uh, what's, the air, what's the airfare for Egypt? In my experience, uh, if you're not... So we generally fly out of Toronto. Um, Americans aren't going to be allowed back into Canada for another decade probably, but... If you if you try to get a direct flight to Cairo, it's a little more expensive. Uh, coach class, I have not had to pay more than twelve hundred, starting from Toronto. And if you're going for the cheapest flight and don't mind a, a connection or two, uh, like in Germany or in Paris, it's very realistic to think you can get that down to eight hundred dollars round trip from Egypt. But in the end, it's airfares. They are what they are. You know. So uh, you know, if you wait too long, or the timing's bad, or you get unlucky with it. Um, but, uh, you can probably get it down to 800 if you're really on a budget and you're really tight with that. And, uh, if you're really unlucky, uh, and you want to, the, the convenience of a direct flight, think maybe up to 1500. Sim similar answer for is for the Istanbul question, by the way. I and hopefully say. I'll have everything that I could be able to help people and see if I could find, you know, the lowest cost by then at that point in time as yeah. well. The intent is that Jewel will be at the ready to assist people to make this as effortless as possible. Do we have any other questions either here, there, or otherwise? Oh, we're here. Yes. Do you need any special shots? Uh, 
Do you need any special shots? Yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. Not no at all. medical. No. No one protected sex with the locals, though. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. If I mean, if there's, if there's no, no, you just you just need to get your shot. Just see, let me know after. <laughs> okay, we do have one other question, Carly. I'm so glad to have you here. Carly went to Peru with me, uh, 2015, I think it was. So, Carly, you can go ahead and um, unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, not really a question. I was just gonna put a plug in for you and say how awesome that my Peru trip was back in high school and how fantastic Mrs. Rosansky was at organizing everything. So um, I have to get back to studying soon, but I'm hoping to maybe see on some of those summer trips instead. But thank you so much. And nice to meet you, Mr. McKissick. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. likewise. And I'm excited your mom's here with us too. <laughs> oh yes, definitely, definitely convince her, pull her arm a little bit. <laughs> okay, good luck studying. <laughs> thank you, yeah. bye-bye. Yeah. Egypt? Yeah, yeah. Typhoid. That's oh, Ian said for Egypt, you need to have typhoid, yeah, which is an oral vaccine. Yeah, okay. So typhoid is recommended for Egypt. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. And if you do get typhoid, like, get the oral, not the injection. It lasts, long, it lasts five years instead of two. Okay. Do we have any other questions or comments? Um, this is Michelle. I have one question. Michelle Betts popping in. Yep. I just, Matt, Matt, can you clarify? You flew through the slide regarding Egypt. Um, was there Egypt and then Egypt, an ultimate Egypt? Yeah. So, uh, uh, thank you for the question. Um, so yes, there is. So there's the what do they call it? The Grand, Grand Royal Egypt and the Ultimate Egypt. So great question. Here, here, here's the idea. When, when I made contact with uh, Bob Breyer and Pat Remler, I said, we want to do the Ultimate Egypt tour. And I'm, I'll just, I'll tell you this guy and some of you are going to be like, dang it, well, but I can't, it's not open right now, I don't think. Uh, I said, I want you to dream the best Egypt tour that can be done from your decades of experience in Egyptology and tour. What is the best that can be done? And uh, we went back and forth and I really pressed them to be creative and think without a resource constrained mindset. I said, assume it was affordable. Don't worry about practicality. And he said, well, okay, well, I thought he'd say, we're gonna go for 30 days. And he, he said, no. Like he said, two weeks after that, you lose people's interest. So it has to be fit into two weeks. I'm like, great. What's the maximum we can do with two weeks? And so one of the things we're going to do is the Kareem being less inefficient wants to run on a certain route on a seven day cycle. We're going to pay them to reposition the empty Kareem for us in the ultimate Egypt trip. Okay. We're going to have, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, it blows my mind that I'm even saying this and it depends on whether the antiquity services allow this. They change, they can be fickle and change their minds. But we're going to have for the ultimate trip, Michelle's asking because Michelle was signed up for the ultimate trip, which has been postponed. It's a 17 day trip. Um, I know there are several of you out there who were signed up for that one. Okay. Um, it's a 17 day trip. Uh, we are hoping to get uh, exclusive private access to, and I don't believe I'm, I'm going to say this out loud, the Great Pyramid for our group for a few hours. Okay, and also the tomb of Seti the first oh. and the tomb of Nefertari and like, like exclusive private access with Dr. Breyer and Pat Remler for our group. Okay, and, uh, and they charge a lot for that. They don't actually charge enough given that it is actually the great pyramid. You know, I, I would charge more <laughs> personally. Uh, that trip was put together and as soon as I announced it, after our last trip in February, it was sold out with a waiting list of 10 people. Okay. Uh, also, to give you an idea, I don't have final pricing on that. For anyone listening who was on that trip, I gave guidance as to the range of pricing, and I was a little bit disappointed that it came out higher than I thought it might. Um, and, and I understand why when I pressed spring tours on it, but that's, that will not cost $10,000, but it'll cost most of the way towards $10,000, I think, for that trip. Okay. That one is. And that one has been rescheduled. So the one that we're talking about here tonight that's on offer, which is the 11, the, the 11 night, 12 day scenario, uh, we'll do that in early February. 
and then immediately there'll be a one-day pause. Then we'll begin the ultimate tour afterwards, okay? And uh, so if you're he hearing that, you're like, hey, maybe I'd... And by the way, it's almost entirely Encore travelers for that. I think with the exception of Michelle Betts, every single person signed up to be on that ultimate 17-day tour has already traveled with us on the Kareem. So it's a different level of, of familiarity with the content and, and a different approach to some of the stuff. So uh, awesome. Thank you, Michelle. And more information to all those groups who, were, who, who have the rescheduled trips uh, for Istanbul and Egypt. You'll hear from me very soon on that. Thanks for the question, though. Okay, I think we have one more question, um, one question there. Um, so Mrs. Martin, if you want to ask your question, I think we should be able to hear you now. Actually, it's a question, Joel. I'm just wanting to tell everyone that it was wonderful that you traveled with me for all of the years. Thank you for your comment. And I'm looking forward to traveling with you in the future. I'm very excited about this and so is my husband. So thank you so much. It'll be good to see you again, It'll be Joel. great to be with you. You too, you guys know I love you. And I remember learning about Egypt at middle school in fifth and sixth grade with Gifted, so. <laughs> Come visit us, Joel. Our living room is ancient Egypt now. Okay, awesome. And bring the awesome. professor from uh, Long Island with you. We'd love to have him look at our antiquities. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Thank you. Love you, bye-bye. Anybody else? Here or there? Yeah, Jim, Jim has a question. Yeah. There you go. What is the number one killer of tours in Egypt? <laughs> what's the number one killer of tourists? Uh, what's the number one killer of tourists in Egypt? Uh, uh, I'm not having anyone show. I think the people who are afraid to go probably aren't, aren't here right now, maybe, I think. Uh, let me see. I, I'm a, a, a nerd for risk statistics and, and, and risk assessment and management. Let's see. The... Uh, uh, the number one cause of death, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly among tourists who get killed in Egypt is uh, vehicular accidents. And uh, the number two is, oh yeah, not where the number one thing you can do in Egypt to, to be safe is put your seatbelt on, on the, on the margins to change your behavior. Yeah. Uh, number two is, everyone's all freaked about this stuff. I think there's been two Americans killed in Egypt and, you know, and that sort of, in the way that, that, that leaves you awake at night uh, in the last 20 years that I'm aware of. Um, number two is uh, heart attack. Number three is drowning. Uh, and, and then those numbers are, yeah, so anyway. But, uh, but thank you for introducing an element of fear in people's minds, Jim. <laughs> That's, uh, in case they hadn't, 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 hadn't they're like, wait, wait, what, what was that? <laughs> That's right, trying to keep it. <laughs> now, now it's getting easier, easier and easier to, to, to fill these. Just so you all know, back to the slide about, I mean, these are, these are finite capacity. My goal is to do as many of these as I have the appetite to go and do, and I'm loving this, uh, as long as it's effortless to sell them. The only thing I don't love about this process is getting down to the nine month mark and having to make an effort to like fill them. If, I've, I've learned if you have more than 12 months notice, these are effortless to sell. So don't think you're gonna have the ability to not plan ahead if you wanna be a part of one of these, okay? When someone has to bail at 90 days because of something, have a family emergency, and now I find myself in a position of, of not wanting to keep their money, but trying, it's like my responsibility to find a replacement now and do that, like, I just don't enjoy that at all. And that's not fun, that's not rewarding. Tonight, is our advertising budget and our advertising plan for the year, okay? That's it, okay? So just so you know and all this and uh, everything except that, trying to fill, uh, by the way, this is a blast tonight. I'm loving this, like, this, is just, this is an absolute delight to me, but every other part of filling them is just not fun, it's work, okay? So as long as we can keep that piece effortless, so you're not gonna probably hear from us on this after, and it is, you know, fortune does favor a prepared mind in this. Um, so, uh, and I think we're probably winding down. Two more questions? So let's do this. You're not the least, those of you here in Warren, let me do this. I wanna say a million thank yous to everyone here. Everyone in TV land, we will keep going. You're free to, to drop off anytime, you know, that you've lost interest or you've heard what you needed to hear or you're good. Uh, I will stay right here on the Zoom line for as long as there are people sitting in seats in front of me or on Zoom with questions or comments to share. Uh, for those of you here in Warren, you're, it's not the least bit rude to stand up to get some more food, get something to drink, uh, find a warm spot around the fireplace or anything like that. Uh, so uh, uh, depending how much further curiosity there is, this might be it. So, but, so thank you all for coming. And uh, there's a question. 
Did I see Amanda on here? Yes, Amanda. Amanda. Hey, cousin Matt. So I just want it's cousin more, Amanda. More of a comment I wanted to make, which is that um, going on a trip with Matt is, first of all, I felt extremely safe a hundred percent of the time. And actually, my daughter went on the trip to Egypt without me. It was the first big trip I sent her on. She was only fifteen, and. Um, you know, Matt and I had m lots of conversations and he's very mathematical. So he studies and researches everything. And, and um, you know, there was one, one night from, you know, I, I, w I was able to stay in contact with her a little bit uh, while she was on the Nile, but she had an incredible time, was 100% safe, uh, was with other, other family members as well. And uh, had this incredible experience that she actually, you know, got took a couple weeks off school and and she, she never ever felt unsafe. And um, I was with Matt in Istanbul. And one thing I'll say about Matt as a tour guide is he plans everything beautifully, but he's also flexible. If there's something you're interested in doing uh, and you bring it up to him, I feel like you make your best effort to try and, and, and accommodate what, what somebody needs. And um, like we were interested in, in the Turkish in a Turkish bath when we were staying at the hotel, and so Mehmet and Matt found this incredible place, was that, which was actually really near to us. That you know, major royalty had it was all stone marble, incredible experience um, that my my sister and and niece and and daughter got to got to do. Actually, my daughter didn't come to that one; she would have been horrified. But um, with all of us naked in a room getting, you know, water thrown at us in a, in a big marble room, but it was incredible. And the point is um, he'll plan something amazing, but also be very open to, I think he will be Matt, um, if somebody has additional interests and I felt a hundred percent safe the whole time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Thanks Mandy. Mandy. No, no, to be clear, like I'm, I take this very seriously. This is a blast. I, on your deathbed, I want you to say that was the best trip I ever did. And if you've done multiple trips with me, I, I want each new one to beat the last. That, that is my goal. I think that's a, I mean, it's immodest to say, but I think it's a realistic thing uh, to accomplish in this. I want you to say that is the best trip I ever did. And I did it with the people I love. Like that is the best you can do with this. And I want you to be able to say that it's the, it's the, it's the best way you can do that place. And I won't build a trip at a given location, unless I feel like I have the ability to offer that unique cowbell, as we say, so that, so that it's, it's, it's better than what you can get otherwise. If I don't have something unique to add that you can't get otherwise, there's no reason for me to do what someone else is doing in the tourism business. Thanks, Mandy, that was we, awesome. We have, uh, Luke has his hand up as well. So Luke, if you wanna go ahead and speak. Uh, hi, Matt, it's been a long time. Hello. Uh, I, uh, if someone allegedly had to report their foreign travel to the Department of Defense, would you be able to forward out the uh, contact information for all the foreigners I come in contact with? So like the hotel owner in, in, in Istanbul and everything? Are you talking about the where we would be staying at and the, the different locations that we would be visiting while we were there, like the addresses and things like that? Yeah, and if you have the contact owner for the owner of the hotel. Yeah, we definitely have, we definitely have all the addresses for all of those things um, far in advance. So if you would yeah. need those ahead of time, just to know where we're gonna be staying, um, we would be able to do that. Obviously the cruise ship in Egypt, for example, is moving, but in Istanbul, we can give you the address to the hotel at any point in time. Yeah, is there any like particular tour guides that we'll be like with every day or something? Yep, um, so with Istanbul, Matt mentioned that Sharif would be our tour guide for Istanbul and also Tom Madden would be the scholar that would be accompanying us for that. And then with Egypt, um, we have Bob Breyer that would be uh, going with us on that trip. But let me just say, as far as the licensed tour guide with uh, the antiquities agencies in Egypt or in Istanbul, there would be one licensed guide that we would be with in each case and that person would be known if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I need all, I, I would need all that. Yeah, I'm not sure I follow the questions entirely, but of course, uh, catch us offline and we'll go in as much detail as you need. All right. Seems like an odd question. I'm wondering what you've been doing in the last three years since I last saw you. Uh, it makes me a little nervous. Uh, is, it, is it safe for us to travel with you? I think so. You think so? Okay, all right, all right. So just, do, we, do we have diplomatic immunity if we're within, standing within five feet of you? Is that how that works? As long as there's an embassy, we're good. 
Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Hopefully that answered your question as best yeah. as we can. Now, Thanks, Luke. Nice we'll, to see you. We'll help you any way we can. Okay. Is there anybody else from the Zoom world that has any other questions or anything you'd like to ask us? Jill has a question. Jill, yes. So two years from now. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. So the cost is American dollars. That's correct. And you do all the exchanges. Yeah. Regardless of what happens two years from now. Yes, now. No. So the question is, Jill's asking, we're, give, we're giving prices in U.S. dollars, but we're paying local service providers in their local currency, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. That's true. We also do say in there that the final pricing will be confirmed at the 12-month mark for each of these. But generally speaking, we're oh, hold on, the dog's going through the food. <laughs> okay, okay, total chaos here. Uh, we are very comfortable with the final pricing that we give you at the 12-month mark. We've never had an issue where we felt we couldn't, you know, where any fluctuations caused us to, to see it differently. If that happens, like, look, I mean, I'm determined to never leave someone, you know, to leave a reasonable person feeling unhappy or dissatisfied with the way we handled something. Uh, if there was a massive currency swing in the wrong direction and our costing under the roof, I'd, I'd have to send an email. I'd have to eat some of it and send an email and ask people to, to, to pass the hat, you know? Yeah. yeah it's, a good, it's a good question. It's a good question. Yeah, yeah. So, cool, thanks. Hey, hey Matt, this is uh, Doug. Got a, got a quick question here. I don't know if you can hear me. Matt? Uh, Dana Holman, looks like you're raising your hand. Uh, Joel, yes. way to stop my dog from eating all the food. So maybe I have the technical wherewithal to get you on the system here. I'm I think I'm on. If you, uh, you want to see something, try it now. Yes, I think I'm on. How are you, How doing, are you doing, Matt? Matt? Good to, awesome. see you. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Yes, yes. So I'm very excited um, about both of these uh, trips and I am very confident I will be joining you on um, one, if not both. Um, a question that I have for you is, are there any meals included? And how do meals, how do meals, meals work? Uh, thank you. So uh, are there meals included? So uh, I was in a hurry, so I went through the inclusion and exclusion slide in like one second each. Uh, I'll be happy, again, we will be happy to circulate the PowerPoint slides afterwards so you can follow this stuff through. Broadly speaking, in Egypt, just about everything is included, meals-wise. Just about everything. Uh, there are some lunches while we are in Cairo or Luxor that are on your own. But broadly speaking, everything is included in, in uh, Egypt. Uh, and while we're on the Kareem, it's, uh, it's full board, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Uh, Istanbul, uh, breakfast is included at the hotel every morning. Uh, and there are two, there's, a, there's a, a welcome dinner and a farewell dinner at the beginning and the end that are included. And uh, lunch is on your own every day, and dinner is on your own for the other five days. I think I covered it all. And uh, alcohol meals yeah. is on you. And I, I yeah, do I have a, a booking site. You don't have to book directly through it, but you can still view the booking site, and it'll have all of that on there nice and neatly with the itinerary and stuff. So if you um, don't want to go back through the whole slideshow or anything like that, just let Matt or myself know. And I can make sure to get you directions on how to just access that site. Um, you know, just to look at it is totally fine as well. Okay. And yeah, thanks so for the question, Dana. If we're interested in going, then we, we book ourselves through the booking site or do we re reach out to you and tell you um, that we're interested and how do we get our down payment in? So you can, you can do either or. So on the booking site, the price you'll find it will be 1% higher because there is a, a fee to use that and there are credit card fees as well on there. So um, you're still welcome though to send us a check and just reach out to us. But if you just wanna kind of look and see what all is included and see our terms and conditions and stuff and not like the old fashioned print way, if you wanna just go on there and check the stuff out, 
um, you're welcome to do that through there. Just email Matt or myself and I'll make sure you get um, concise directions on how to do that. But yeah, you can certainly book everything through there if you wish, but it will be just a slight, like I said, you'll, you'll notice just about 1% higher to do, to do it on there because we do have to pay, you know, pay to use those sites as well. Got it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Doug. Doug. Hey, Matt. How are you? Can you hear me? Doug, how are you? I'm good, Matt. How are you? I'm awesome. That's good. Turn this mic off and on to stop the feedback. Go for it. Yeah, no problem. Hey, um, is there, uh, you went through the other trips too. And so is there a way that we could just get the list, um, you know, either emailed like the Churchill trip. So, um, and you know, I, I just didn't capture all the dates. Got it. Uh, you want to kill the, yes. Um, poke me tomorrow morning. I'll email you everything. We can have a conversation anytime. Yeah, you just reminded me, you were, you were on the Churchill waiting list, I think. You were the first one who didn't quite get to go, if I remember correctly. I think, I think that's correct. Um, uh, although, uh, although I was working harder then. <laughs> so, so was I. <laughs> you were working harder. I was working. <laughs> uh, that, that's perfect. If you send that, then we'll chat in the next, uh, you know, next week or so. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, the ball's in your court to poke me. Send me an email. Yeah, Thanks. No you you're, consider yourself poked. <laughs>